Last Sunday before the play, we gave a warning suggesting perhaps that you might not wish some members of your family circle to watch this piece. Well, so much has happened since then, so much has been written and so much said, there's little more I need add. We have heard words like disgusting and immoral used. Well, the play is none of these things, but it is grim, frightening, and at times shocking, shocking in the sense that we are all shocked when we are brought face to face with a picture of man's inhumanity to man, or worse, his inhumanity to the spirit of man. Now tonight, I'm thinking particularly of the new viewers in Aberdeen whom I left early yesterday morning. We had planned that on Tuesday, we should all have had the light relief of the witty, charming comedy about Aberdeen, rehearsed and played from Aberdeen, set in the old university and by the cathedral. That couldn't be. And so tonight, you in Aberdeen are seeing your first television play, and it's 1984. Even for some of you, it may be the first play you've ever seen. Well, will you please use your judgments as to whether some of those sitting at home with you should or should not see this piece? There's only one other thing I want to add, and that is, as you sit there watching it, and as the last frightening pictures fade on the screen, do remember this to me. The most alarming thing in the play is the fact that it has no hope. And as the mortally ill author George Orwell preciously bought his one script south from Glasgow to London, he couldn't find it within him to give hope to the play. But I'm sure that he would wish us tonight, and I think this is important, as we watch this piece and watch the end of it, find from our own resources, from our own hearts and our own souls and minds, that hope and belief in ourselves, in mankind that is not there in the play. This is one man's alarmed vision of the future. A future which he felt might, with such dangerous ease, be brought about. Atomic war, famine, revolution, the collapse of a civilization, and then, in its place, the formation of a new way of existence. This, in 1984, is London chief city of Airstrip One, a province of the state of Oceania. the right type of valve. Put it back. You know it would have been brought to your work cubicle on request. This irregularity has been recorded. Return to your cubicle, Smith.
correction required as follows. The Times of the 17th of March 1984 copy sent here with contains report of speech by Big Brother. He is alleged to have predicted that Eurasian forces would launch attack in North Africa. Please rectify in accordance with facts. Good evening. Your technical fault has been put right? Yes, I'm able to go on now. In his broadcast speech last night, Big Brother referred in confident terms to the probability of a full-scale Eurasian offensive early next month. There is now no possible doubt, he said, that it will take place in North Africa. Other fronts are expected to remain quiet. An extraordinary error. The speech was evidently misreported. Presley misreported, since the offensive, in fact, came in India. South India, three days ago. Exactly. Such a careless report must not exist. Routine correction to Times of 17th March 1984, where shown, quote, in his broadcast speech last night, Big Brother referred in confident terms to the probability of a large-scale Eurasian offensive early next month. There is no possible doubt, he said. It will be launched in South India. Other parts are expected to remain quiet. Reprint entire back number and file. as follows. The Times of 19th December 1983 contains a report of statement by the Ministry of Plenty refers to, quote, categorical pledge, unquote, of no reduction in chocolate ration during 1984. Please rectify. Routine correction to Times of 19th December 1983, where shown, quote, a spokesman for the Ministry of Plenty stated last night that it will be necessary to reduce the chocolate ration to 20 grams in April, unquote. Reprint entire back number. Final warning. Stand by, comrades, for the two minutes eight. <laughs>
whole of Oceania is plunged in ignorance. Universal and abysmal ignorance. Ignorance even of the most elementary principles of democracy. Ignorance is strength. Ignorance is strength. Ignorance is strength. The dictatorship of the party must be overthrown. I call upon the people to destroy the tyrant who calls himself Big Brother. Sign. Smith? What is it? No, are you going to the canteen? Of course. Look, I'll, I'll join you if you don't mind. Now, please, come along then. Them stew with salt, them stew without. Now, now, come on, please. Them stew with salt. By the way, Smith, I suppose you haven't got any razor blades. <laughs> Not one. I tried all over the place. They, they don't exist any longer. Sometimes people have a few hoarded away. I've been using the same blade for weeks. Now then, come on, where? Which? Uh, them stew is salt. Them stew is out. Any gin today, honey? Give me one. That's um, 25 cents altogether. Well, look, Jim. There's a free table under that telescreen. Uh, I'll join you. Huh? Now, then, come on there. This chew is so flip, chew is out. Look in need of that. But two minutes hate can be quite exhausting. Did you go to see the prisoners hanged yesterday? No, I was working. The telescreens are bound to show it soon. Very inadequate substitute. How's the stew today? It's all right. No, oh, it's, it's very good. You're hard at work on the dictionary, I suppose? Yes, I, I've reached the adjectives at last. It's fascinating working in the research department. We're in constant touch with our colleagues in New York, getting the language into its final shape. New speak. I can see we'll have a busy time. It becomes compulsory, learning all the new words your department's invented for us. We're not only inventing words, we're destroying them. Scores of them, thousands every day. It's beautiful. Beautiful? It's my simplicity, oh, of course. Oh, for one example, just take the word good. If you have that, what need for the word bad? Ungood does just as well. Then instead of a string of vague extra words like excellent and splendid, you have plus good, or stronger still, double plus good. In Newspeak, the whole notion of goodness and badness will be covered by six words, in reality by only one word. Don't you see the beauty of that, Winston? It was B.B.'s idea originally, of course. Well, I do my best to keep up with the published changes. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've read some of those little pieces you've had published in the Times occasionally. 
a new speak to Good in their way, but only translations. You are still thinking in old speak, clinging to useless shades of meaning. To be or not to be. The verb to be is abolished in the 11th edition. That is the question. Uh, Shakespeare. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to... Or, or to... I forget how it goes. Doesn't matter. By the year 2050, the whole literature of the past will have gone. Milton, Byron, Chaucer, they'll exist only in newspeak forms. As they are, they could only do us harm. Harm? Huh? By confusing us. Oh. You know the newspeak phrase, old thinkers, unbellyfeel, ink sock. Old thinkers, you're one. Unbellyfeel, lack a deep emotional understanding of, ink sock. English socialism. I'm meaning it's completely lost. You see, you can't translate newspeak. Even the party slogans are changing. How will you say freedom is slavery when the word freedom no longer exists? Oh, I'm sorry. Move my chair if I need your way. I see, Winston, this is the point. Winston, the whole aim of Newspeak is to narrow the range of thought. I, I, to, to narrow the range of thought? In the end, we'll make thought crime literally impossible because there'll be no words to express it. Well, that's excellent, but even now there's no excuse for thought crime. It's just a question of reality control, uh, of self-discipline. When newspeak is perfect and compulsory, there won't be the need even for that. The revolution will be complete. Have you ever thought, in 70 years or so, there'll be nobody alive who could possibly understand this conversation we're having? Well, except, the, except the pros, and they're not human. With that creature over there with the ladle. Them still with soul, them still with that. Thoughts like that don't need simplifying. Thoughts. Mm. You've been into a pro sector later? Why? Looking for razor blades, possibly? Oh, that isn't forbidden. No, it's not forbidden, we'll have you. Well, I believe once a few months Then you must have seen, they're not human, they've no minds, they live by instinct. The pros are animals. I know what you're thinking. And even animals have a memory. No, I wasn't thinking anything. The proles haven't. No. If you'd asked any one of them about the past. The past, as I think. Oh, here's Parsons. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello. Mind if I join you? Oh, look at him working through his supper hour keenness. <laughs> What's that you got there, old boy? It's a new grammatical. Oh, index. too brainy for me, I expect. Mm -hmm. Rocket bomb in the prole sector, by the sounds of it. Eurasian swine. Sniff, old man. I tell you what, I'm chasing you up. It, it's about that sub you forgot. Another you know. one? Uh, yes, for the house to house campaign oh. for eight weeks. <laughs> Bad luck for old Smith having the treasure of the next door neighbor. It won't be my fault if old Victory Mansion doesn't have the biggest outfit of flags in the whole street. Two dollars, you promised. I'm me. sorry, I don't seem to have that much on me. Oh. You chaps eat too well, that's what it is. Suppose I called him with it tonight, but. Oh. All right, yes. Uh, and if he wants that bit of cheese. Yeah, that isn't it wonderful? Oh, my kids will be pleased. Now, here are some details of increased output in other consumer goods. Don't wait for them to go. The chocolate ration was reduced to 20 grams only yesterday. Yes, they believe it. Double think. They make themselves believe it. Our new happy life. Grease and grime, the smell of dirty clothes and synthetic gin. And that stew. Careful. Face crime. Wood scaffolding, 259%. Razor blades, 141%. And semi-mechanical excavators for clearing bombed areas, 14%. That is the end of the Ministry of Plenty announcement. Oh, Mini Plenty has certainly done a wonderful job this year. Oh, by the way, old man, You've got any razor blades to spare? I mean, until summer on sale again. Sorry, I've been using the same one for six weeks. Oh, it's all right. I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> Coming over to the centre. Sime. Yeah. Just as well to look in. There might be something new about hate week. Do you know I haven't missed an evening in the centre in the past four years? Really? It's a fact. 
Come, Smith, look alive, old man. Mm. Oh, you're coming over too, aren't you? Oh, no, I've got some work to do at home, an article. Oh. Come on, man, come on. Good night, Winston, good night. Attention, comrades, attention! Here is a supplementary production bulletin issued by the Ministry of Plenty, giving further glorious news of the success of the seventh three-year plan. In clear demonstration of the rising standard of our new happy life, the latest calculated increases are as follows. Domestic utility furniture, 97%. Electric light fittings, 60%. Domestic glassware, 129%. Non-utility furniture, 82%. Utility metal mirrors, 41%. Carpets, 22%. Reading matter, 9.5%. Building materials, no less than 367%. Non-utility lampshades, 80%. Domestic utility cutlery, 47%. Children's educational toys, 33%. Canvas boots, 192%. Heavy gauge domestic strings, 20%. Medium gauge domestic string, 15.5%. Pig iron, no less than 229%. That is the end of the supplementary bulletin from the Ministry of Plenty. Mr. Smith, are you there? Mrs. Parsons. Oh, comrade, I thought I heard you come in. Can you spare a minute to come and look at our sink? It's got blocked. You see, Tom's not home yet. No, he, he said he was going to the community centre. Of course. Uh, well, I'll see what I can do. Oh, it's making me late with the children's supper. You know what they're like. Such a trial, those two. It won't. Oh, it won't empty. There'll not be any plates washed to eat of. The very night I've got to be early at the youth centre. I'm trying to learn my lesson. In the old days before the glorious revolution, London was not the beautiful city we know today. It was a dark, dirty, miserable place where scarcely anybody had enough to eat. Children had to work 12 hours a day for cruel, cruel masters who flogged them with whips. I know what's happened. Somebody's done something to this. We must have all sneaked in when we've all been away. Filthy traitors! You mean blocked it up on purpose? Yes! Who? I'll find out. And when I do, where have you been leaving me here? Do you want me to go to the youth centre without any supper and tell them that you don't see me, eh? Oh, no, dear. After all I've done this afternoon. Oh, yes, dear. She's such a brave, clever girl. A real child hero, as they say. She actually managed to... Don't tell him about it! Don't you dare! No, dear. Mr. Smith, come to fix the sink for us. Yes, sir. Let's take a look. Do you mind if I borrow that piece of water? Well. Who said you could interfere? I asked him to help, dear. Oh, shut up! Mrs. Brasmus, I'm afraid I'm going to need a bucket. Oh, yes, there's one in the bedroom to catch the water coming through the ceiling. You'd better leave it alone. <laughs> Why? She thinks it's sabotage. Oh, does she? The rich men were called capitalists. They were fat, ugly men with wicked faces, like the one shown on the opposite page. Look at his funny, shiny hat. <laughs> yes. That was their uniform. You're old. 
Did you ever see a capitalist? Oh, I don't remember. The capitalists owned everything in the world. If anyone disobeyed them, they could throw them into prison. What are you doing? Oh, it's quite simple. You just slacken this nut and let the water run out, and nine times out of ten you can get at the obstruction. You do know a lot, don't you, about our thing? <laughs> They're all the same in these old flags. You mean it was him that did it? You are, Mr. Smith. Oh, thank you, sir. Don't! Don't do anything to help him! What's the matter? Traitor, criminal, saboteur, ghost hunter. Face the telescreen, comrade. In a moment, he's going to show us what he blocked the pipe up. Oh, no, not Mr. Smith. Show us what's in the pipe. It's fair. It's reddish most, a bit like yours, see? <laughs> You'll need to be careful washing their heads over the sink. Don't you laugh at me. They didn't laugh at me this afternoon. They didn't. What, what happened this afternoon? I won a medal. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, Smith, what's this? Who won a medal? I did. What? Oh, Tom, she was out with her troop of spies on a country hike. Oh, let's sit down and hear all about and it. And she got two other girls to go with her, and they slipped off from the hike. Well, why did they do that? We were following this strange man, I saw. Uh -huh. I was sure he was some sort of enemy agent. Parachuted, perhaps. He was a foreigner. Well, how do you know? Well, he was wearing a funny kind of shoes. Uh -huh. I never saw anybody with shoes like that before. Oh, pretty smart, huh? How's that for a sharp eye? Go on, you trailed him. For two whole hours. And when we got to Barnet, we told the patrol. And then? They arrested him, of course. They took him away to the Ministry of Love. The Ministry of Love? Oh, it'll be there, all right. It's on her word. <laughs> oh, that's a clever girl. That deserves a medal if anything does. Yes. Yes. Oh, and you'll be on all the telescreens tomorrow. Oh, and they'll want you down to the youth centre, won't they? Oh, yes, I've got to go. I've got to. And she hasn't given me my supper! What's this, that? this bother with the sink, oh, you Mr. Smith. use it now, Mrs. Parsons. You get us something to eat straight away. My, 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 my. We've got something to be proud of now. Victory Mansion's own child hero. Oh, and I've got a lot of leaflets here about hate speech. Hand out the community centres tonight. Oh, you should have been there, Winston, old man. Let me see. I want to see. Of course, but I must talk to Mr. Smith, though. Well, I'd better be going. <laughs> oh, good night. Oh, come with you, old man. I'm organising squads of men. They're in our bunting. 400 metres. Moment, dear. And I want mine. Someday I'm going to be a child hero. You've got to make us strong. We're the glorious generation. We're going to track down all the thought criminals and traitors. We'll shoot them. We'll vaporize them, whoever they are. And I'd like to put your name down as leader one of the groups, old man. Of course, yes. Good. I knew I could rely on you. Oh, see a lot of organizing to do. But I do most of the work myself. <laughs> got to keep up with the kiddies. Yes, sir. They're very keen. Oh, yes, all they think of is spies and the war, of course. That's very peculiar. What is it? Sort of alcove there. Peculiar? Why, meant for a bookcase, I'd say, when these houses are built. I could swear it's out of view of telescreen. You're implying the thought police forgot to test it? <laughs> oh, no, Winston, I'll man, no, no. Oh, by the way, here's that two-dollar sub I owe you. Oh, ta. Ah, oh, yes. I'm very proud of me, kiddies. Winston, why didn't you get married? You should have, you know. It's my duty to the party. Exactly. I had been married, Mrs. Stallone. Huh? Well, we separated, but part of the mission. I hadn't seen her for years. Any children? Oh, well, then you had to separate. I mean, there was no point in staying together, was there? No point at all. You say, old man, you weren't looking for... I think in the old days they used the word love, were you? Of course not. That's called sex crime today. Loyalty to the individual is detrimental to the party. And the only purpose of marriage is to beget children at the service of the state. I, too, belong to the junior anti-sexies. Uh -huh, the old anti-sexies, yeah. some of the jolliest times I ever had. Community hikes, parades. I was a member for eight years, you know. Nearly took the oath of celibacy. It hadn't been for the repopulation till the 1973. That's when I married, too. Uh, come a long way since then, haven't mm. we? Soon the whole glorious new system in operation. Separate the sexes, artificial insemination. Art and institutions for the children. Of course, far better than family life for bringing them up in the true party spirit. And I think my kiddies were born too soon for all that, because I've cheated them somehow. I think they'll catch up. Oh, they'll join the anti-sex league as soon as they're old enough. When I see my little girl in the old checkered sash, oh, I'll even be prouder of her then than I was tonight. Yes, I'm sure you will. <laughs> that reminds me. I must go and see she's been fed for, kid. <laughs> Good night, old man. Good night. Get rid of this thought. 
rid of it quickly before it's too late. Double think. Practice it. The party says the earth is flat. True. That's true. The party says two and two make five. True. No. And not to know. Forget and forget that you've forgotten. Double think. Crime stop. Ignorance is strength. <laughs> Comrades, attention! Here is a special bulletin from the Ministry of Peace. It tells of victory. Victory on the South Indian Front. It can be revealed that for 72 hours without break or rest, our beloved leader, Big Brother, ceaselessly studied reports from the battlefield. He scrutinized each list of casualties. He even found time to rejoice in accounts of individual acts of heroism by our glorious soldiers, in the brave deeds of those who were carrying out his wise decisions and winning the victory that he had planned. The victory that he had made to happen as day must follow night. The victory is his. Victory to him. The glory is his. Glory to him. Big brother. Big brother. Big brother. Here it is, listen to this. She slipped off her dress, disclosing the whole warm beauty of her body. Arthur, she whispered, the door's unlocked, the door's unlocked. <laughs> What's it called? One night in a girl's school by Jason Flinders. Jason Flinders wants to remember that name. <laughs> oh, Flinders knows his stuff, you know. Hey, look at this, look, look, he's written hundreds of them, see? Where'd you get them? Oh, I've got my contacts, see? Here, I'll find you any number you want, if you pay for them. Pay for them? They're only five cent ones. Yeah, but special. Here, 25 for you. There ought to be something done about it. There's got to be, and soon. Ah. This is important. I tell you, no number ending in seven ain't one for over 14 months. Yes, it has been. No, it has not. I've taken down all the state lottery numbers. Got them at home, wrote down on a bit of paper. And I'll tell you that no oh, number... Yes, it says, and I can pretty near tell you the ruddy number. 407 it ended in. February. Second week in February. I've got it all in black and white, and I'll tell you that no number ending in... All I ask you is for a pint. All right, all right, that's enough. All I ask is civil enough, didn't I? Are you telling me you ain't got a pint mug in the old bleeding booth, sir? Look, I don't know what you mean. Litres and half litres is all we serve here. I just had a fancy to have a pint today. When I was a young man... Oh, when you was a young man, we was all living in the treetops. <laughs> Can I offer you a drink? You're a gent. A pint. A pint or wallop? You know, Jim? In a prol sector. We don't get it here. Beer. Twelve cents. Be 
that you've seen a lot of changes since you were a young man. The beer was far better and cheaper. That was before the war. Which war was that? It's all wars. Of course, people of my age don't really know what conditions were like before the revolution. We can, we can only read what the history books say. Was there really terrible oppression and people starving, no boots to wear? Women and children being whipped to work 14 hours a day and sleeping ten in a room and the capitalists in great houses driving in carriages and motor cars and wearing top hats and drinking champagne. Top hats? <laughs> Funny you should mention that. I was only thinking the other day, I ain't seen a top hat in years. Last time I wore one was at my sister-in-law's funeral. You wore one? More than 50 years ago, it must have been. Cost was only hired. <laughs> but look, uh, what I really wanted to know was this. Don't you feel that you have more freedom now? Well, isn't it the fact that you had to call the rich people, sir, and, and take your cap, uh, your hat off when they passed? Hmm? They liked you to. It showed respect, you see. They liked you to. Look, in, in 1925, you were a grown man. Now, try and remember 1925. If you could choose, would you rather live then or now? You expect me to say I'd sooner be young again. Oh, no, no, it, it isn't only that. Look, don't you understand? I'm when trying you're to old, you ain't never well. My feet's dreadful. And me bladder. On the other hand, it has great advantages. You don't have the same worries. No truck with women, and that's a great thing, you know. You can just sit and think of nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, Don't number any Good evening. Good evening. Oh, I thought I recognised you outside on the pavement. You recognise me? Yes, you're the gentleman who bought the old exercise book some two or three months ago, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, you remember. Oh, it was such a beautiful bit of paper. Cream laid, we used to call it. There's been no such paper for, I dare say, about 25 years. Anything special I can get you? No, I just thought I'd look in as I was passing. Well, perhaps it's just as well, but I don't suppose I could have satisfied you. Between ourselves, the... Antique trade's finished. No demand, no stock. Furniture, china, metalware. It's all been broken up or melted down. What's this? Paperweight. Take it. It's like snow falling inside there. Of course, it's filled with water and the white particles oh, it's are... beautiful. Yes. Though there's not many would say so nowadays. If you should happen to want to buy it, the price would be four dollars. Oh, I only wish I had more to show you. Oh, thank you very much. Four dollars. Yes, thank sir. you. But you see how it is. An empty shop. Mind you, there is another room upstairs. Not much in it, just a few pieces. Oh, I'd like to see it. Oh, well, fair enough. Yeah. We'll do with the light if we're going upstairs. Before my wife died, this was our sitting room. I'm selling the furniture off by little and little. And that's a nice gate leg table over there. Of course, you'd have to mend the hinges if you wanted to use the flaps. Oh, there's, there's no telescreen. No, I never had one of those things. If you want one down here, you have to buy it. You know, they're not provided. Too expensive. And I never felt the need of one somehow. Sorry, no books. Oh. They, they were all taken away long ago. <clears throat> I doubt if you found any in the pro sector nowadays, but 
We should have to be interested in old print. No, the frames fixed to the wall. Oh. My wife always had a fear of cords breaking and being startled in the night, but I guess I could unscrew it for you. Do you know I know that place? It's a, it's a ruin now. It's in the middle of the street outside the Palace of Justice. That's right. Just outside the law courts. Yeah. It was a church at one time. St. Clement Stain, the name was. Oranges and lemons say the bells of St. Clement. What's that? Just a rhyme we had when I was a boy. Just the names of churches. All the principal ones in London. I never knew there'd been a church. Now, how did that rhyme go? Oh, I've got it. Oranges and lemons say the bells of St. Clement's. You owe me five farthings say the bells of St. Martin's. <laughs> it's like the sound of bells. Please go on. That's as far as I can get. Uh, Farthing now, that was a small coin, something like a cent. Oh, yes, uh, and where was St. Martin's? It's still standing. Uh -huh. In Victory Square, just near the, the statue of Big Brother, on top of the tall, fluted column with, with the lions at the foot. It wasn't always Big Brother, you know. Oh, well, we've seen enough of this room. We'd better be getting back to the shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you go first. I have to take my time on the stairs. Oh, all right. I could let you have that. For oh, no, 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 I, I don't want it. Anything the matter? You, you haven't got a way out through the back of the shop. Uh, I mean, uh, as a shortcut. I mean, uh, uh, never mind, it, it wouldn't help. If it's the patrols, you came here looking for razor blades. Party members do occasionally. Oh, thank you. Now, you're forgetting your purse. Oh, yes, thank you. So glad that you found somebody if you like it. Good night. A good night to you. The name's... Charrington, call in again if you're passing. Don't forget. this time, eh? Cloves and saccharin. Uh, but it does something to this victory gin. But we can't put it in every time, you know, but uh, there's a war on. All right for now. Back again in a few minutes. Oh, good evening, comrade. You get me a large gin, will you? Yes, comrade. Plenty of paces. Sit wherever you like. Thank you. A sign. Or Smith. May I join you? Of course. It's quiet here. Yes. Do you come often? No, not often. No, I've only been here once or twice in my life. Sometimes there are party musicians and painters. <laughs> it's colourful. Twenty-five cents, three. Oh, it's a luxury tax, you see. Are you watching for anybody? Remember, it's all on the house for you, remember? It's fine. Yes? Fine. Have you ever noticed a young girl, dark-haired, about 25? She worked at Minotaur in the fiction department, I fancy. She was at the table next to ours in the canteen yesterday. Yes, I've noticed her. Why? Well, I've got reason to believe that she's a... Ma no, I will... Uh I got reason to believe that she was a, a, a district organiser for both the Youth League and the Junior Anti-Sex League. And if I'm correct, she might provide an exemplary subject for a Newspeak article I propose to write. Sounds a most interesting project. Commendably orthodox. Double plus good thinkful.
Underneath the spreading chestnut tree, I sold you and you sold me. They lie here and here lie we, neath the spreading chestnut tree. What was that? Who are they? Don't you recognize them? Yeah. Why, of course. It was in the Times, the last conspiracy trial. But that changed. If they confessed to sabotage, embezzlement of party funds, intrigues with Goldstein's agents against Big Brother. If they confessed, now the telescreen is reminding them. They were released. They come here every day. For them, the gin's free. They can play chess if they wish. Uh, sorry, I, I disturbed you when you were playing out your problem. No, you didn't. This cafe is quiet and suitable. I suppose the members of your chess club come here to play. Members? The Mini True Chess Club. You're on the committee this year, aren't you? I saw your name on a notice. Today. Today I received a notification. What? That I'm suspended from all my duties. Pending investigation of my conduct. You? I'm even suspended from the chess club. Winter. Uh, this is unfortunate, but I, I've no doubt the inquiry will be fair. Don't go. I, I've been sitting here for hours trying to decide what I could have done. Something I said, something I thought. No, no, no. Yesterday, in the canteen, I talked too much, perhaps. Who was listening? There was Parsons, uh, and there was you, Winston. Oh, I don't remember. I was the next table. There was that girl, the one you mentioned. Let me go. I have Wh nothing to do with it. Which of you denounced me, Winston? Was it yourself? What did I say? <laughs> Winston, don't leave me! Alone! 2159, Sime B. Stand where you are. All other customers in the Chestnut Tree Cafe are to leave immediately. Quickly, quickly. Sime, ungo into coming think -pull. The thought police are joining you. Full of men in black uniform. Sign, not to me. If they wanted me, they'd have come by now. She, she can't have reported me. Yet. I should have acted down in the pro sector. Got her alone. Smashed her head in. I can still do it. Counter attack. An open window, an empty staircase. To go her away, I'll watch for her. Wait for her from tomorrow. Your pre-setting completed? Yes. Test your motor. Very well. Stand to attention. They'll be here in a moment. In a few weeks, that tune will be haunting every pro sector on Airstrip One. The sentimental ones are issued sparingly, so they're always popular. Now, the apparatus that produced that was comparatively simple, as you saw. But here in Porno Sec, we'd like to see a novel writing machine in operation. This way. I've seen your lottery calculators in the Ministry of Plenty. These are much more elaborate. This machine can turn out 20 pornographic novels a day. 
All phrases and thought sequences were built in during assembly, so that it has its own distinctive style. Its products go out under the name of Jason Flinders. They're distributed, of course, in sealed packets, and the pros imagine they're getting something illegal. Will you demonstrate? The operator is now adjusting the situation kaleidoscope, which varies the six basic plots. Notice the operator, long service sash in the anti-sex league, two purity badges. She has been especially chosen for her exemplary character. We have to be careful here. The stuff's rubbish, of course, but it might be catching. The machine sets up its own type, ready to print. It also provides us with a check copy. Here it comes. Sandra Wayne slipped off her remaining undergarments, disclosing the whole warm beauty of her body. As she prepared to step into her bath, there was a rustle. The ugly snout of a black automatic showed between the curtains. A man stepped out. Put down that gun, said Sandra coolly. It may be loaded. But a curious thrill ran through her. Oh, quickly, get it free. Let me see. I was adjusting the kaleidoscope for chapter two. Fool. I must apologize for this. You better go to the medical section. Look out. It's bleeding badly. Go with her. The shortest way is through the records department. Come along. Steady yourself. Unfortunate. Now, as you will observe, each machine differs slightly from its neighbors. We'll have a look at the next one. Routine correction to times of 19th November 1983 after verification with current issue. Quote. In a statement issued today okay. by the minister. Perfectly capable of walking alone. In a statement issued today by the Ministry of Peace, it was categorically denied that any... Help me with her. She's been hurt. Records Department, Minister. Check that disturbance. You're all right now. Come along. categorically denied that any withdrawals had taken place on the Malabar front, unquote. Take train number 26, get out the tenth station, turn left, take a path across a field to a grass grown lane, down that to a little wood, look for a fork tree. So I'm coming, can you remember? I think so. Hello, 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 how's the stew? Beans. Oh, jolly good old Simon ought to be here, that's his favourite. He's not here? Uh, no, we work in the same office, I noticed. He must be ill. Yes. Oh, thanks. I say. I wanted a confidential word with you, old boy. Confidential? Yes, about the hate we have. Uh, you know, I've got you leading one of the groups of men. Mm -hmm. When I was awake till three o'clock this morning working it all out. Now, where's somebody to draw with? Oh, this'll do. Now, you see, there's the old victory mansions there. Well, all this shadowy part here. Well, I thought if you could come along.
searching for a hidden microphone, weren't you? There aren't any. We're all right here. We're all right here. I found this place once when I got lost on a community hike. It's quite safe. Is it? Oh, you can trust me. Please trust me. Oh, I wanted to believe you. What you wrote, I wanted to very much. But the note wasn't enough. What's your name? Julia. I know yours is Winston. See, I'm better at finding things out than you are. Tell me, what had you been thinking about me? I hated the sight of you. I wanted to murder you to smash your head in. Why? You followed me. Well, I wanted to speak to you. I thought you were something to do with the thought police. <laughs> I'm not the thought police. You honestly thought well, you're, that. You're young and strong and healthy. Pure in word and deed, banners, possessions, slogans, games, all that stuff. And you thought if I would half a chance, I'd denounce you and get you killed off? Something of the kind. A lot of young girls would. Actually, I am that sort to look at. Keep an eager face. Always shout with the crowd. Never shirk anything when you're safe. I do voluntary work three evenings a week for the Anti-Sex League. So I've earned this filthy thing. I'm 35 years old. I've got a wife I can't get rid of. Physical grade three. I couldn't care less. Oh, I'm clumsy. You see, Never it's been mind. so long. Oh. Oh. How did you know it should be me? Something in your face. I thought I'd take a chance. I'm good at spotting people that don't belong. The moment I saw you, I knew you were against them. So easily? No, I don't mean you give yourself away. It's a sort of... Fellow feeling. Something you can only recognize if you're looking for it. Something that flashes across I'm on your side. That's right. Oh, you missed me, I know. <laughs> my fault. My disguise is too good. Didn't you ever notice it with anyone? No. Well, there is a man named O'Brien. I, I felt quite sure, but once or twice I felt... Oh, listen. That bird. So close. Suppose there were a microphone somewhere. They'd be listening. And hearing that. Let's sit down. Tell me about your wife. She was beautiful. She hadn't a thought in her head that wasn't a slogan. She submitted to marriage out of loyalty to the state. She had two names for it, uh, making a baby. And our duty to the party. <laughs> you know that one, too. Sex talks at the Youth League for the over-16s. Actually, it's out of date now. They're getting techniques to replace marriage. With Catherine, there wasn't anything to replace. You must have hated her. Eventually. This is the unforgivable crime, you know that. Between party members, I know. And then in the end, we can't win, you know that? Too. Yes. Just that some kinds of failure are better than other kinds, that's all. How long do you think before they find out? Six months, if, if we're careful. A year, five years. We'll be careful and clever, too. We'll find other places like this, better ones. Sometimes we'll only be able to manage a word which other passing in the street, and, and then there'll but be those We won't times. give up. No. We might even be able to find a, a secret place that's just our own. a challenge, and we're going to accept it. My darling, forgive me. My hand, my arm, my face. Let's enjoy being alive.
I could let you have the room. Not many people come into the shop. I don't suppose I should get in your way. Everyone needs a place where they can be alone occasionally. Privacy is a very valuable thing. If they have such a place, well, it's only common courtesy on the part of anybody who knows about it to keep his knowledge to himself. Thank you. I should have to charge you a little rent, though. Oh, of course. Just yeah. to cover expenses. Yes. Shall we say five dollars a week? Yes, and I'll, I'll pay a month in advance. Oh, yes. oh thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. I'll go up myself this evening and thank you. Put the room to rights. Thank you. Oh, by the way, there are two entries to the house. One of them gives on to a little lane at the back. Oh. I mean, the main streets are so crowded nowadays. You can scarcely fight your way through. It's always the same when we get to hate week. Stop it just for a minute. What? The hate song. Day after day from every telescreen. There's no escape from it. That's what they've turned love into. Oh. All this marching up and down and waving flags and cheering. Simply sex gone sour. You mean they depend on that hysteria all bottled up? They, in... ca they can't bear to feel anything else. When you make love, you use up a lot of energy and then you feel all warm and happy inside. You don't give a damn for Big Brother and the three years plan. Oh, darling, mm -hmm. I nearly forgot. I want you to stay just there. You're not to see me for the next three or four minutes to make sure you better turn around. But what are you going to do? Please, I'll let you know when you can look. <laughs> the Prole Woman. That's a Prole Feet song, isn't it? Number 2765. The product is an electronic machine, and she sings it as if it meant something. She's as solid as a pillar, as sturdy as... You know, Julia, she's beautiful. <laughs> I saw her yesterday a meter across the hips easily. That's her style of beauty. Strong heart, strong arms, toughened by 20 years of childbearing. Julia, if there's any hope for the future, it lies in the proles. Proles? 85% of the population. If only they became conscious of their own strength, all they need is to rise up and shake themselves like a, like a horse shaking off flies. They'd throw off the party. Conscious? They like a horse, all right. Don't you remember the old slogan, proles and animals are free? Darling, they think they're free now. Free to work themselves to death. Free to enjoy the filth that's peddled to them by the party. Drugs, foul books. The hey, my life's work. Darling, they love it all. The party gives them exactly what they want. If only there was some way to show them. Do you think the Brotherhood... What about the Brotherhood? It's just struck me, being able to talk about it. I've never done that in my life. Do you think Goldstein's Brotherhood really exists? No. Why not? Rebel against the party, be too stupid. There's that inner party man at Minitrue, O'Brien. I've always felt that he's a man you could trust, if only you'd get him alone. You know, once it was just after the two minutes' hate, I caught his... Darling, mm -hmm. you can turn around now. Face. You like it? Yes. Pro women use this stuff. I don't know if I've put it on right. The dress doesn't fit very well. Thirty years ago, it belonged to Mrs. Charrington. It was only an old this is my style fancy. of beauty. At least, at least I'm a woman now. Oh. <laughs> and I belong in this room, don't I? How old do you think everything is here? Oh, more than the dress. Fifty years, a hundred. Pictures at a hundred years old? What more is probably two. You can't tell the age of anything nowadays. I've seen that place somewhere before. What is it? It used to be a church. St. Clement Danes, its name was. Oranges and lemons, say the bells of St. Clement. I owe you five farthings, said the bells of St. Martin's. When will you pay me, said the bells of old Saint. <laughs> you know it. I can't remember any more. Oh, who taught it to you? My grandfather, when I was a little girl. <laughs> Winston, mm -hmm. forget about the Brotherhood. The clever thing to do is what we're doing now, just to break the rules and stay alive. The kettle's boiling. I'm going to make some coffee. Well, I brought some. It's over there. Victory coffee. Mm -hmm. I've got something much better than that. Mm -hmm. 
Jason, flinders, manicures, hats, the tools of my trade, concealing. One quarter of in a party coffee. Oh. <laughs> Where did you get her? Black market. There's nothing these in a party swine don't have. And look, real sugar, not saccharin. Oh. Darling, will you make the coffee? Yes, I will. Oranges and lemons, let the bell go it was a rat. A rat? What a fuss to make and a mess. Oh, yes, there's the hole. I'll have to bung it up with some of that broken plaster. Oh, my darling, you're trembling. Come and sit down. I don't like rats, that's all. Tell me. There is something to tell, isn't there? Yes, but I never had to anyone. It's horrible. God. It was when I was small. I don't know what age, but, but small. My father had disappeared, and I lived with my mother and my little sister. She was just a baby, and sick nearly all the time, like a thin monkey. You see, there was, there was hardly any food to eat. I remember screaming at my mother because I was so hungry. She used to give me hers, but even that was so little. I wanted all there was. I couldn't help it. And one night, they took my mother away for questioning. And as soon as she had gone, I, I went to the cot where my sister was lying. I snatched the piece of bread she had. I don't think she noticed she was so weak. I ran out and, and far away. And I ate the bread. I didn't go back until next morning. The house was dark. There was no mother. I went to my sister's cot and, and I looked in. And, and you must say it. You must, you must. The rats would have been. Oh, please. Now, don't think about it anymore. But I dream. You see, when something bad happens, that same night I see the cot. The last time it happened was after they took some. I'm going to put the kettle back and make that coffee. He's dead. Did I tell you? No. <coughs> you see, every, every day I've looked at the notice board and the printed list of the chess committee. And this morning there was nothing crossed out. And his name wasn't there. He doesn't exist. He never existed. You know that? that night he talked to me. He talked to one of us and denounced him. You or I. I wonder who did. Or he himself. How? Oh, he was too intelligent. He saw too clearly and spoke too plainly. That it should happen was written in his face. And who in this thing? like a tiny world with its atmosphere complete. If it were possible to get inside there, to have your life there, and mine. My darling. Perhaps even to find the real people again. Ah, Smith. I was hoping for an opportunity of talking to you. I was reading one of your Newspeak articles in the Times the other day. You take a scholarly interest in Newspeak, I believe. Oh, well, I, I, I'm only an amateur. Mm, you write it very elegantly. That's not only my opinion. I was talking to a friend of yours not long ago who is certainly an expert. His name... escapes me for the moment. But I noticed you used two or three words which have recently become obsolete. Have you seen the tenth edition of the Newspeak Dictionary? Oh, no, we are still using the ninth in the records department. Ah, yes, of course. The tenth edition isn't issued for a month or so, I believe, apart from a few advanced copies. It might interest you to see one, perhaps. Very much so. And some of the new developments are most ingenious. The reduction in the number of verbs. Now, let me see. I could send it to you my, by messenger. <laughs> Except, of course, I should be sure to forget. Perhaps you could pick it up from my home sometime. Yes. I'll just jot down the address. Yeah. 
Better not let it seem that we're having secrets. That's the address. I'm usually at home in the evenings. If not, my servant will give you the dictionary. It's an inner party address, all right. One of those big new blocks. Another rocket bomb must be miles away. Darling, what makes you think he meant anything more than he said? You saw his eyes. Very well, suppose he does hate the party, doesn't everyone secretly? Winston, they'd all like to break the rules if they thought it was safe. It doesn't mean they belong to the Brotherhood. But when he mentioned science, your friend was an expert on the newspaper. His name slipped my memory, don't you see? He couldn't name him directly. It would be mortally dangerous. Science not only dead, he's abolished, he's, he's an unperson. But it was a signal. For a moment we came near to thought crime together. We were accomplices. You think he'll lead you to the Brotherhood? Yes. If they exist... They must. I've been waiting all my life for this. If they're not just another invention of the party, it's something to hate. Haven't you marched in a demonstration when there was a trial on and shouted death to the traitors? Well, of course. You knew who they were? Perhaps, sometimes. Or what they'd really done. Yeah. You see, how do we know what exists? Even the war itself may be a lie. The party says we're fighting Eurasia or Eastasia. They can change it in a minute and make it true. Always somewhere in the desert or the jungle, we don't know. When a rocket bomb drops in one of the protectors, it might have been fired by our own government. All right. You and I, we're helping to make these lies. I sit at my desk in the records department, helping to draw the darkness it's in. It's your work. We've helped to destroy history. There's only an endless present where the party's always right. Can't you guess why I started this diary? To know what happened yesterday. Whatever this chance may be, I must take it. You think they're starting a rebellion? No, not in our life. Oh, then what's the use? If little pockets of resistance can be started, just a few records left for the next generation. I'm not interested in the next generation, only in us. I know. Winston. Because I love you, I won't let you do this alone. They take us, there's nothing we can do about it, is there? Nothing. Nothing. If that happens, the only thing that matters is that we shouldn't betray one another. Oh, you mean confession? I'd do that right away. You do under no, torture. No, I don't mean confession. Confessing isn't betrayal. What you say or do doesn't matter. Only feelings matter. If they could make me stop loving you, that would be the real betrayal. No, they can't do that. They can make you say anything. Anything. They can't make you believe it. They can't get inside your heart. If you can feel that staying human is worthwhile, even when it can't have any result whatever, then you've beaten them. We'll go to O'Brien, together. As soon as you work out just how and when. Tonight. Now. Kiss me first. Comrades, attention. It is officially announced by the Ministries of Truth and Plenty that the current hate week has broken all records for production. And to match this activity on the home front, a Ministry of Peace communique shows that our brave soldiers on the Malabar front have driven a wedge. You can turn it off. Yes, we can turn it off. We have that privilege. Shall I say it, or will you? I will say it. We have come here because we believe there is some sort of organization working against the party and that you are involved in we it. We want to belong to it. We are enemies of the party. We disbelieve in the principles of Ingsoc. We are thought criminals. We want to put ourselves at your mercy. If that isn't sufficient... Martin is one of us. Look at yourself for yourself. You can stop being a servant now. We'll sit down and talk in comfort. This is called wine. You will have read about it in books, no doubt. I'm afraid very little of it reaches the outer party.
Fired. Is it as you expected? Uh, no. I've always thought of it as being intensely sweet, but I'm afraid I can't taste very well. Victory gin does not improve the palate. Now, let us begin by drinking a toast to our leader, Emmanuel Goldstein. Then there is such a person. Yes, there is such a person. And he is alive. Where? I do not know. And the organization? It is real? Not just an invention of the thought police. No, the Brotherhood is real. Now, you will understand that I must start by asking you a certain question. In general terms, what are you prepared to do? Anything that we're capable of. He speaks for me, too. You are prepared to give your lives? Yes. To commit sabotage, even murder? Yes. To betray your country to a foreign power? Yes. To cheat, forge, blackmail, disseminate drugs? Yes. To do anything likely to cause demoralization and weaken the power of the party? Yes. If, for instance, it would somehow suit our purpose to throw sulfuric acid in a child's face, you are prepared to do that? Yes. To lose your identity and live out your life as a waiter or a dock worker? To commit suicide if and when we order? Yes. You are prepared, the two of you, to separate and never see one another again? No. No. You did well to tell me. We must know everything. Martin, take a good look at these two comrades. You will be seeing them again. I may not. Now, go back to your pantry. I shall be switching on in a quarter of an hour. Before you leave here, I shall give you a book from which you will learn the true nature of the society we live in and how we shall destroy it. When you have read it, you will be full members of the Brotherhood. You will receive orders from me through Martin. Apart from three or four other contacts or immediate tasks, you will know nothing. You will get no encouragement, no comradeship. When, finally, you are caught, the only help you may expect will be a razor blade smuggled into your cell. You will confess the little you know, betray a handful of unimportant people like myself, and die. We are the dead. Our only true life is in the future. We shall take part in it as handfuls of dust and splinters of bone. How far away that future is, there is no knowing. Perhaps a thousand years of spreading our knowledge outwards from person to person, generation to generation. In face of the thought police, there is no other way. Thank you. Now, you should not have come here together. You must leave separately. You, comrade, first. Wait. We still have some wine left. What shall it be this time? To the confusion of the thought police? The death of Big Brother? To humanity? The future? To the past? The past is more important. Now, put one of these on your tongue. The lift attendants might notice the smell of wine. Martin, you will show the comrade out. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, I assume you have a hiding place of some kind? Yes, a room in one of the pro sectors above the shop. Keep it for the moment. Later, we shall find something else for you. Have you any questions you would like to ask? Uh, no. Oh, did you ever happen to hear an old rhyme that begins, Oranges and lemons, say, the bells of St. Clement's? You owe me five farthings, say the bells of St. Martin's. When will you pay me, say the bells of Old Bailey. When I grow rich, say the bells of Shoreditch. 
You know the last line. Yes, I know the last line. Now, have you brought your old briefcase with you? Yes, sir. Very shabby and inconspicuous. Good. The Newspeak Dictionary. Tenth edition. Don't open it now. Study it well. You two had better take one of these tablets. Goodbye. Goodbye. And tomorrow evening at 18.30 hours in Victory Park will come the great climax to hate week. No less than 200 Eurasian war criminals will be publicly hanged. He's upstairs. He came in some little time ago. Thank you. I wanted to show him something, but he hadn't the time. Something I found in the back of a drawer. See, it's a locket with a little curl of gold hair in it. I'm afraid it's broken. Oh, it's better. I went to the hanging. Oh, why? Camouflage. We can't be too careful now. The crowd were delirious. If they'd got their hands on them, they'd have pulled them to pieces long before the time. Look. You speak fiction. By Emmanuel Goldstein. O'Brien gave it me last night after you left. You read it? I know what's in it. Oh, Julia, I feel a whole person for the first time in my life. All the suspicions and doubts and hopes I've ever felt, they're completely justified. Oh, we were wrong about some things, but right about so many. And now it's all clear. The truth. Here, my darling. Drink this. You cold. And now, listen. No, I don't think I want to hear. What? It will only be something more to hide. But we are committed. Tonight I found I couldn't yell with the crowd in the same way. For the first time I wasn't able to feel I was part of them. But hate week's over now. So is the excitement, the madness everywhere that's helped to hide us. From here on... You have, have to know. It's not a burden, it's strength. Now you'll feel that too. Darling, I've marked a few passages. Now here, here for instance. When the United States absorbed the British Empire to form Oceania, and Russia took Europe to form Eurasia, two of the three world states were in being. Their ideologies were Insoc, Neo-Bolshevism, and later death worship in East Asia. These three states are permanently at war. Then it's not a sham. Wait. War has changed its character. It exists only to preserve tyranny. Fighting when there is any takes place on vague tropical frontiers around the floating fortresses. The essential act of war is the destruction of human labor, a way of shattering or sinking the materials which might be used to make the masses too comfortable, in the long run, too intelligent. No invasion of enemy territory must ever take place. Then the real war isn't with Eurasia at all. It's between all of us and... And then, the party member, like the proletarian, tolerates conditions because he has nothing with which to compare his way of life. Efficiency, even military efficiency, is no longer needed. In Oceania, nothing is efficient except the thought police. The swine, the filthy swine. Big brother. Does he exist? Is the guise in which the party shows itself to the world. No one has ever seen him. It's all here. The revolution, what it was like before that, what freedom was. Oh, Julia, I know now at last that I'm not mad. Oh, my darling, you thought that. Well, even if a person's the only one to believe something, that doesn't make him mad. There's truth and there's untruth. But if you stick to the truth, even against the whole world, you're still not mad. I want to read it. We'll read it together. Hi, yes, she is. I suppose she's hanging her washing on the line as usual. Hi, Baby clothes. Mm -hmm. Her own or her daughter's. How many children do you think she's had in her time, Liz? Might easily be 15. Mm -hmm. Darling, after we made that horrible promise to O'Brien last night, and I went back to the hostel. Alone. I couldn't get it out of my mind. I suppose we had to say it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, but I didn't mean that. I meant your being alone to think about it. There are times when people shouldn't be alone. I began to wonder, perhaps, 
if we could just have gone on as ordinary people, disappeared somehow, learned to talk like the proles, got a job in a factory. It's too late now. We are committed now. Too late. Not only since last night, my darling. Then we determined to face the facts and do something about them, but for us, why, it's 30 years too late. <laughs> if we'd lived then, we'd have been married. By 30, even 20 years ago, we could have walked through the streets quite openly, talking about anything we liked. They'd have known we loved each other and there'd have been nothing they could do to stop us. They can't stop us loving now. I say that time all things. The future's I hers, die. isn't it? Maybe we can share it. How? Well, she and her children can keep alive the body, but we can keep alive the mind. Pass on the secret. The book? Oh, no, no. no it's simpler than that. Just the two and two make four. Our future. But it has to be this way. Darling. Do you remember something that O'Brien said? We are the dead. We are the dead. You are the dead. <laughs> Look! Remain exactly where you are. Make no movement until you are ordered. It was only an hopeless fancy. It passed like an ice will die. But I look... Ah! The around us. I suppose we may as well say goodbye. You may as well say goodbye. They've got a ladder. Winston! Die! Don't reduce. Don't move. <laughs> Charrington! Pink Paul, reporting crime fix, 20, 45 hours, proceeding many love wives. I discovered the end of the little rhyme. You may as well have it so that it's not wasted. Here comes a candle to light you to bed. Here comes a chopper to chop off your head. Take the woman first. Not the Ministry of Love! Not there! Winston! Winston! What are you in for? Lord Crime. Oh, I know I'll get a fair hearing. I, I trust them for that. They'll have my records, won't they, old man? You know what sort of a chap I was. Not very brainy, but I did the best I could for the party. That's about five years, don't you think? Ten years? Uh, a chap like myself could make himself pretty useful in a joy camp. I mean, they won't shoot me for going off the rails just once, will they? Are you guilty? Of course I am. You don't think the party arrests an innocent man, do you? Thought crime's a dreadful thing. It gets a hold of you without you even knowing it. I talked in my sleep. Do you know what they heard me say? Down with Big Brother, over and over and over again. Oh, I'm glad they caught me. Saved me. Who denounced you? Oh, my little girl. A pretty smart train of her. Oh, I don't bear any grudge for it. In fact, I'm proud. It shows I brought her up in the right spirit anyway. Room 101. What else is it you want? I'll confess anything, anything. Only write it down and I'll sign it. You've starved me for weeks. 
Hang me. Shoot me. But not room 101. Room 101. There's the one you want. Not me. Do you hear what he said when he was presented to give me that bit of bread? Now I'll tell you everything. No! Listen! Something went wrong at the tennis team. Brian, they got you too. They got me a long time ago. You knew this, Winston. Don't deceive yourself. You did know it. You've always known it. One seven ten. Do you remember writing in your diary that freedom is the freedom to say two and two make four? Yes. How many fingers am I holding up, Winston? Four. And if the party says it is not four but five, then how many? Four. One eight. <laughs> How many? One ninety. How many fingers, Winston? Four. Five. Four. Anything you like. Only stop the pain. Stop. Winston. How can I help seeing what's in front of my face? Two and two make four. Sometimes, sometimes they're five, sometimes three, or all of them at once. You must try harder. Is this, is this room 101? No. How long have I been here? Admit it. Seven weeks ago, Winston. Mm. During that time, you've been beaten brutally every day. You see, I don't pretend. You have confessed to assassination, to distribution of seditious pamphlets, to religion, to embezzlement of party funds, sale of military secrets, sabotage, murder. Why do you think we bring people to this place? To make them confess? No. To punish them? No, to cure them. We're not interested in the stupid crimes you have committed, only in the thought. I'm taking trouble with you, Winston, because you're worth trouble. You are mentally deranged, a defective memory. Now that is curable, but you must try to help me. Even now you are clinging to the impression that your disease is a virtue. How can you stop people remembering things? You can't control it. You have not controlled it. You are here because you prefer to be a lunatic, a minority of one. <laughs> Only the disciplined mind can see reality, Winston. It needs an act of self-destruction, an effort of the will. You must humble yourself before you can become sane. No, no. How many? I would, I would see five if I could. I'm trying to see five. You only wish me to think you do. No, no, you, you'll kill me if you do that again. Four, five, six fingers. In all honesty, I don't know. I don't know. This time it will not hurt. Three thousand. There are five fingers there. Do you see five fingers? Yes. Still? No. No, there's only four again. But you see now it is possible. Do you 
remember writing in your diary that it did not matter whether I was a friend or an enemy, since at least I was a person who understood you and could be talked to? You were right. I enjoy talking to you, Winston. Your mind appeals to me. It resembles mine. Except, of course, you happen to be insane. Oh, no. <laughs> now, before we end this session, you may ask a few questions. What have you done with Julia? She betrayed you immediately, unreservedly. Oh. You would scarcely recognize her. All the deceit, folly, rebelliousness, dirty-mindedness burned out of her. A perfect conversion. You tortured her. Next question. Does Big Brother exist? Of course he does. The party exists. He is the embodiment of the party. But in the same way as I exist. You do not exist. I think I exist. I'm conscious of my own identity. Will he die? Of course not. How could he? Sit up. Go on, Winston. Ask him. How, how did you know? Very well. What is in room 101? You know, Winston. No. Everyone knows what is in room 101. Take him back to his cell. Winston, do not imagine that you will save yourself. No one who has once gone astray is ever spared. Even if we chose to let you live out your life, you would never escape from us. What happens to you here is forever. Things will happen to you here from which you could not recover if you lived a thousand years. Never again will you be capable of ordinary human feeling, of love or friendship or joy of living, of laughter or curiosity or courage or integrity. You will be hollow. We shall squeeze you empty, and then we shall fill you with ourselves. <laughs> Have you understood, Winston? <laughs> One ninety five. <laughs> you have learned, Winston. Now you must understand. You have read the book, Goldstein's book, parts of it at least. The program it sets forth is nonsense. The secret spread of knowledge, of proletarian rebellion, the overthrow of the party. It could not happen in a thousand years or a million. I know. I wrote the book. Oh. Now, start with this thought. The rule of the party is forever. Remember it, Winston. 220. No. Take him away. Winston, Winston, you know how the party keeps power. Now tell me why. You are, you are ruling us for our own good, because we are not fit to govern ourselves. <coughs> that was stupid, Winston. I want intelligence. The party seeks power for its own sake, not as a means, but an end. Power over the human mind, and power over all... Matter, climate, disease, the laws of gravity. Because we control the mind. Reality is inside the skull, Winston. We control the laws of nature. The stars are not light years, but a few kilometers away. If we wished, we could blot them out here. That is power. In our world, there will be no love but the love of Big Brother. No laughter but the laugh of triumph over a defeated enemy. No art, no science, no literature, no enjoyment. But always and only Winston there will be the thrill of power. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. <laughs> Are you prepared to commit sabotage, even murder? Yes. To betray your country to a foreign power? Yes. To cheat, forge, blackmail, disseminate drugs? Your problem.
promises, Winston. And you consider yourself superior to us with our lies and our cruelty? Is that the spirit of man you hope would arise and defeat us? It must. It must defeat you. I, I don't know. I don't know how. Oh, somehow you'll fail. You'll fail. If you are a man, Winston, you are the last man. Release him. Your kind is extinct. We are the inheritors. Do you understand that you are alone? <laughs> there is a mirror. You shall see yourself, the guardian of the human spirit, as you really are. Look. If you are human, that is humanity. My poor friend, you're almost well. Look in my eyes. It is not enough to obey, big brother. You now know what is needed. Who it is you must love. You, you did that to her. What was that? Be careful, Winston. Now. Oh, Julia. Julia! Julia, my love. <laughs> You once asked me what was in room 101. It is there that we have the means to root out the last lingering deception. Pick him up. What happens in room 101 is the worst thing in the world. It varies from individual to individual. It can be death by burning, burial alive, or something quite trivial, not even fatal. In your case, we both know, of course, that the worst thing in the world happens to be... No! No, no! 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 Not so! Oh, please, O'Brien! What is it you want me to do? I... Oh, no! By itself, pain is not always enough. Here in room 101, you are meeting the unendurable. Courage and hardness are not important. You will do what is required of you. What is it? How can I do it when I don't know what it is? You will find that you know. Now, as you will see, this is a mark. It fits over the head, leaving no exit. When the plastic door is raised up, the rats will shoot out like bullets. It was a common punishment in Imperial China. The rats were caught in the sewers a week ago. Now they're starting. Oh, do it to Julia. Do it to Julia. Not me. Julia. I don't care what you do to her. It's Julia. Julia, not me. Not me. Compliments of the house, comrade. 25 cents. Entitled to come here for the last three months. Might as well have the use of this while you can. You want a regular place reserved? Just let me know. That's all. Hello. Here we go again. Been bad news all day. 
pincer movement by the Eurasian forces towards Brazzaville. It's not just a matter of losing the Congo, and anything might be happening out there. Stand by for an important announcement from the Ministry of Peace at 20.30 hours. This is news of the highest importance. Stand by at 20.30 hours. Evening, comrade. What do you think? There's your table, comrade. Where? The usual place. Mm. I've got a place reserved already for you. Mm. There's a special bulletin at 20.30 hours. Mm -hmm. Sounds bad. Mm -hmm. I think I'll... I've been out for three weeks. I've got a, a, a committee job. And it's quite hard, hard work. I betrayed you. I betrayed you. Sometimes they threaten you with something you can't stand up to. Mm -hmm. Can't even think about. And you say, don't do it to me, do it to... Afterwards, you pretend you only said it and really mean it. That's not true. At the time you want it to happen to the other person. Yeah. That you don't feel the same about the other person any longer. No, no, you don't. Underneath the spreading chestnut tree, I sold you and you sold me. They lie here and here like we sleep. Spreading chestnut tree. We, we must meet again. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll keep a place for you. No. Over here tonight, eh? Huh? Twenty, thirty hours? This is it. Victory! Victory, Comrade, after all. here is the bulletin from the Ministry of Peace. It tells of victory. <laughs> By means of a strategic maneuver unparalleled in the history of warfare, our brave troops have utterly routed vastly superior Eurasian forces. The whole of this magnificent and secret operation was inspired and conducted by Big Brother. It is his military genius alone that has brought control of the whole of Africa within measurable distance of realization. This colossal victory... Love. Suddenly. So suddenly. My victory. Love. 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 I love big brother. <laughs>